Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. First up today, a quick PSA from Bjorn. Finally, we can really get a superb charging network in Thailand. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Thai, I mean, Tesla is going to sell like hotcakes in Thailand because of the pricing. This is actually fairly affordable for many, many people. It's not just for the upper rich, like around 1.8 million baht, many, many people can afford it. And what, what? We got the CPCA data for the breakdown between domestic sales in China and exports for November. We knew the total was already 100.2 thousand. So the exports came in at 37.7 thousand and domestic deliveries locally in China, 62.4 thousand. Now I did change this chart around a little bit. So we have production over here in the first column and I've added inventory over here on the right. We're starting to see the unwinding of the delivery wave as we had a big domestic number for this month. Again, it's the second month of the quarter. So the best comparison would be August, which is the second month of quarter three. So nearly a doubling of domestic deliveries when comparing the second month of the quarter. You're probably wondering what these orange numbers are. I just added the total for the first two months of each quarter. So we could compare the first two months so far of quarter four to the past first two months to see how we're doing and clearly the highest first two months of the quarter by far. Think of this inventory number as cars left in China after exports have been sent. So these cars are basically waiting to be delivered whether they're waiting to be loaded onto ships or they're waiting to make it to local delivery centers. It's pretty simple to calculate. You just have a running total and then with each new month as we get the data, you just take the total new production. Of course, you subtract the domestic deliveries, subtract the export, and then whatever that difference is, that'll bring you to your new inventory total. So right now, as of the end of November, Tesla still has 21.3 thousand cars in inventory in China heading into the December month. We'll talk more about the inventory number in the future, but again, as Tesla unwinds the delivery wave, they literally told us that inventory numbers would be going up as they change how they operate in Shanghai. So there's really no need to be alarmed when you see Tesla's inventory numbers going up, especially compared to earlier in the year, because again, as Tesla told us, they're changing their strategy in China. Tesmanian presented that same data with a little different context, saying in China, in November, again, domestic deliveries, Tesla cash captured a 10.45% share of the new energy vehicle market. Then in the first 11 months of the year, so year to date, Giga Shanghai's deliveries are up 59% compared to that same time frame last year, again for domestic deliveries. Tesla's stated goal is 50% year over year growth. So at least so far in the domestic Chinese market, they are on track and actually exceeding that sales goal. As I've been saying now for weeks, things probably will slow down in the Chinese market over the next three to six months. But again, so far so good. I also wanna show you the updated chart from the accountant. My orange numbers were the total for the first two months of each quarter, and Tony's chart is for domestic deliveries for the first two months of each quarter. Again, this quarter four off to a very, very strong start relative to the first two months of prior quarters. And one more very telling chart from Matthias. Just for the month of November, Tesla's domestic sales in China up 96.9% .9 over November last year, while the overall China car market, not just EVs, but the overall car market is down 9.2%. So yes, the overall car market in China is down, but look at the new energy vehicle market. As you can see on a steady uptrend dating back to January 2021, but now it has eclipsed a 35% market penetration rate. Again, this is for the domestic market in China. Meaning for the month of November, over 35% of all new car sales were for new energy vehicles. And yes, new energy vehicle does include both full battery electric and plug-in hybrid. Moneyball had multiple tweets like this yesterday for different companies in China. This 80 dealer has almost no leads, people afraid to go out due to the outbreak. Down here, a BYD dealer was saying visits are down around 20 to 30% due to the COVID outbreak. Buyers have no money, especially for an NEV because it can oftentimes serve as a second car which is a great transition to this new stock note from Piper Sandler who has a Tesla price target of $340. 
Alex Potter said, talking about the CPCA data in the retail or domestic sales in China, notably, sales have now fallen sequentially for two straight months. This is the first time since 2008 that China's car market has declined month over month in both October and November, which are two of the seasonally strongest months in the year. So some people not naming names are alarmed that Tesla has around 20,000 units in Chinese inventory, but market-wide, the inventory number is 3.72 million units, and that was at the end of October. The point right there is the point we've been talking about now for weeks on the channel. If things are going to get difficult for Tesla, then I can assure you they are going to be difficult for every other automaker in the region as well. Clearly, that's the case with this data. All automakers in China are starting to see this slowdown ahead, not just Tesla. So if you or anybody you know still has a big bulky wallet with no smart features, it's definitely time to check out Exter. Now, yes, they're the sponsor of this video, but I've been using this wallet all year and honestly, it's been awesome. The model I use has a built-in spot for an Apple AirTag, which is clutch. The days of looking around for your misplaced wallet should be over. And if you want an even slimmer profile, Exter does have solar powered tracking devices too. They charge in the sun, you can ring your phone from the tracker, and you can ring the tracker from your phone. And in 2022, if your wallet does not have RFID protection, you are leaving yourself vulnerable. And you guessed it, Extra has you covered here as well. A lot of you know, this card fan feature is my favorite thing hands down. They do have a wide variety of other products and accessories. And if I'm running out quickly, I'll slap on this MagSafe wallet to my phone and just take a card or two. Extra products are high quality material. Again, I've been using this all year as my daily driver. And as you can tell, it's still in excellent shape. Exter is taking care of all of us here at Electrified for the holidays. Check out shop.exter.com slash electrified linked below and my code electrified will get you 35% off a smart wallet. So if you're looking to do some holiday shopping, they really do have a nice selection. It's definitely worth a look. And as Gary Black highlighted from the note, excluding COVID shutdown months, November was the worst month for annualized China auto sales in the last nine years. Which is a good segue to this new report. Now, some people came out and denied earlier reports that Tesla Shanghai was going to cut production by 20%, but this is a slightly different new piece of news. They're saying Giga Shanghai is going to shorten some of the shifts at Giga Shanghai by about two hours as soon as Monday. And they're also going to delay some of the new hires that were going to come on now. Now they're going to be asked to come in toward the end of January after the China New Year holiday. And I'm just going to sound like a broken record, but we should be expecting things like this over the next three to six months as we head toward a recession or continue in it, whichever way you prefer to interpret it. CleanerWatt did a really good video on the Tesla semi efficiency compared to some other semis, but also to the Ford F-150. Basically, he calculated the miles per gallon equivalent. So if you don't know, burning one gallon of gas is equivalent to using 33.7 kilowatt hours. That's how they come up with the MPGE figures. The craziest part about this data, the Tesla Semi came in at 20 miles per gallon equivalent with a full payload, fully loaded up to that 82,000 pound weight. These figures below for combustion engine pickup trucks are without a payload and without towing anything. So the Tesla Semi fully loaded is already more efficient than combustion engine pickups without a payload not towing anything. And if you want a more apples to apples comparison, here are the numbers for those combustion engine pickups towing 9,000 pounds, which would be near the capacity for some of these trucks. And the Tesla Semi, again, fully loaded, now twice as efficient as these combustion pickup trucks towing 9,000 pounds. Full video will be linked below. You may recall a Tesla owner sued Tesla claiming that Tesla made false self-driving claims. Now Tesla is trying to get that case dismissed and we got some new commentary from what Tesla said. Tesla believes it's making notable progress and just because the technology isn't yet meeting very optimistic goals, that doesn't mean it's non-existent or useless. Tesla also said mere failure to realize a long-term aspirational goal is not fraud. I was really happy to see this one as Tesla Scope said they got numerous reports from vehicle owners confirming they've gotten the option to join the FSD beta on their legacy Model S and X vehicles, yes, with the older MCU-1. 
Here's a legacy MCU1 Tesla, and now they have the opt-in button for the FSD beta. And previously, Tesla did say they would have a specialized version of the FSD beta dubbed FSDB for these older vehicles with MCU1, so it looks like that's starting to roll out now. Just one anecdote from Reddit on this topic, but if you have the right cameras, a big if, then you should be good if you just have MCU1, meaning you won't need MCU2. This person spoke to a service tech in Georgia saying MCU2 is only needed for FSD if you want to see the visuals on the screen. I would add you'll most likely still need the updated Tesla FSD computer, Hardware 3, because yes, the FSD computer is separate from the media control units. I'm very happy we got an update on the Tom Zoo reporting. It looks like he's now currently in Giga Austin with some other employees from Giga Shanghai helping to speed up things at Giga Austin. Right now, we don't have any official word on if Tom Zoo's position is going to change at all. Maybe he's just here doing some contract type work and there's no timeline given either. But at least we know that right now, he is indeed helping to oversee the ramp at Giga Austin. Tom has been with Tesla dating back to 2014 in a few different roles, but currently he's been serving as basically the head of all of the Asia Pacific region and played a key role in overseeing Giga Shanghai, which of course is doing incredibly well. And all that I will say for now is Tom Zhu is an absolute gangster, and I mean that in the absolute best way possible. This move makes a ton of sense because you may remember Tesla has been looking for a plant lead for Giga Austin now for the last few weeks. Omiyad Afshar was in that role for a while, kind of Elon's right hand man, but recent reports had him now working over at SpaceX after there was potentially some weird things going on with a purchase order for some special glass that you may remember, so that position has been vacant. To be clear, I'm not at all saying Tom Zhu is now going to fulfill that position. I'm just saying it makes sense to have him help oversee things at least for now because that position has been open. This user on Reddit shared a really cool visualization of the HVAC when you go into service mode on a new software update. So I can't really explain much of what's going on here, but I just wanted to pass it along because I thought it was cool to look at. More good news for anyone wanting a Gigafactory in Canada. For the first time, Tesla has been heavily involved in the 2023 budget discussions for Canada. Tesla said Canada has taken effective action on generating demand and investing in infrastructure, but still needs to improve on its supply policy. Some suggestions that Tesla has made for the Canadian government, an $850 per stall for workplaces that equip at least 5% of their parking stalls with charging posts. Tesla also suggested the government establish two to three hubs in each of Canada's highest cost real estate markets with 30 to 50 charging stalls each. They're also suggesting Canada tap into the 500 million already available from the Refueling Infrastructure Initiative and use it for multi-unit residential buildings to build out charging infrastructure on site. When it comes to heavy trucking centers, Tesla has suggested two different levels of support. One will be for zero to 1.99 megawatts in terms of charging speeds and a second larger grant for sites above two megawatts. People were already fired up about the Tesla Semi and the Cybertruck being able to charge at up to one megawatt, and now we're already talking about two megawatt stations. I'll have a link to the full document linked below. More goodness from Gary Black. Tesla is now trading at 31.8 times 2023 Wall Street consensus earnings per share of $5.60. Remember, I had my estimate in as seven, just a quick off the cuff number. But this would be the lowest forward PE since January 2019 when it traded at 28.6 times next year EPS. So using that low Tesla forward PE, that would give Tesla stock a floor of $160. Don't ever invest based on one metric, but this is good data nonetheless. We also won't dive into this one because it's not yet official and nothing has been agreed to. These are basically just talks of what could happen, but maybe Elon will take around $3 billion of the Twitter debt that's in the neighborhood of 12% interest and switch it out for a new Tesla stock margin loan, which of course some Tesla stock investors will not enjoy as the loan may be a few percentage points lower than it is right now on Twitter's debt. Something to watch and be aware of, but nothing has happened yet. We got a new interview with BYD's executive vice president, Stella Lee. We've been talking about these Chinese automakers shifting their eyes to the global markets, and here we get this. BYD looking to build a passenger car plant in Europe. Yes, and maybe not one, it could also be two. 
In the long run, if you really want to be competitive and maximize your margins, you have to localize your production on the continents where you're selling cars. She also said BYD is looking to buy its own ships to export cars. The size of BYD when we go to any shipping companies, their service can't 100% satisfy us. And this is probably just marketing speak, but she did say she doesn't view Tesla as a competitor because its success means more people are learning about EVs and the true competition, maybe the enemy, is the combustion engine vehicle. GM has plans to install 40,000 EV chargers, mostly in rural parts of America. Now, these are going to be level two, so not fast chargers, but they're said to be placed at places like parks, sports venues, or downtown shopping districts where people already spend considerable time. Given that there are around 43,000 level two chargers in the country right now, if GM can pull this off, they would effectively be doubling the amount of level two chargers in the country by themselves. So far, a thousand GM dealers have signed up to install as many as 10 chargers per dealership, not at the dealership, but locally in the community where the dealerships are located. Tesla has hired Chris Winton to be the champion of the people at Tesla, AKA he'll be the head of human resources. Previously, he spent about 35 years at FedEx and he worked his way up the chain to end his career at FedEx as the head of HR. To be technical, FedEx was calling his role the chief people officer. In response to a Sawyer Merritt tweet about Tesla's November sales, Elon actually did tweet about Tesla saying, Tesla team has done incredibly well despite extremely difficult times, could not be more proud of them. I won't lie, it's pretty refreshing to see Elon tweet the word Tesla. I would love to see it more. Before I share my opinion on this one, I wanna throw it out to you guys. What do you think about some people in the Tesla community wanting to see a few Tesla shareholders be appointed to the Tesla board of directors? And yes, when I say shareholders, I'm talking about retail shareholders. And there's been a lot of voting on this over on Twitter, but again, some people are recommending that Ross Gerber and Gary Black be appointed to the Tesla board of directors to give the retail investor shareholders more of a say. Again, before I comment on it at all, I wanna ask you guys what you think. Don't forget, check out extra links below. Even if you don't need anything, you could get a really cool gift for somebody else. Take advantage of that 35% off. They do have some really cool stuff. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.